Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and these just turned up at my front door about five minutes ago. We've got the new Pixel 4 and the 4XL, but I didn't want to waste any time in bringing you this unboxing, running you through what's new on the Pixel 4 series, and also just giving you my sort of first impressions and initial reactions to the new Google phones. So as we expected, there are two new Pixel models. We've got the standard 4 and its bigger brother, the 4XL. But let's see what we actually get in the box. And so if we do put the phone to one side for a second, even though that is, uh, <laughs> that is a very interesting color, let's put that to one side. Uh, in the box itself, a few uh, bits of paperwork, including a SIM ejector tool, a white USB-C to USB-C cable. We've got a full-size USB-A adapter, which goes into the USB-C port on the bottom of the phone. And this can be useful for transferring your data from older phones. And finally, there's the plug adapter. This is of course the UK one. We've got the USB-C port on the back and it's an 18 watt plug. So no super fast 30 or 40 watt fast charging that we see in some other phones. And that's actually it. There's no three and a half mil headphone adapter. There's no basic plastic case. There's not even any earphones in here, which seems a little bit cheap. All right, so let's get to the good bit and actually talk about the phones. And straight away, you can see the difference in size. The Pixel 4 here has a 5.7 inch screen versus 6.3 on its bigger brother, the XL. And that does make quite a big difference to the overall size. But what do you think in terms of design? We've got this matte finish on the back. So there are actually three colors, the white, the orange, and also a black, but the black version is glossy. So I think actually these two are probably the nicer colors. The Aso Orange is actually a limited edition version, so they won't be selling quite as many, and it is also limited to just 64 gigabytes. There's no 128 option for this. So I think for most people, maybe the white one is gonna be the best option. And you can also see we've got these uh, contrasting power buttons. We've got this sort of lighter orange on the orange and just the same Aso Orange on the white. But it's a bit of a highlight for what is otherwise quite a simple design. Gone is that two tone look of previous pixels now it's just a single color this matte glass and of course with this new square camera module up top where we've got two lenses you'll also notice on both phones that the rear fingerprint reader has gone it used to be here there is no longer a fingerprint reader instead google is focusing all its efforts on the face unlocking which we'll talk about in a second We've also got this metal aluminium band around the outside. It's a matte black color, which not only gives it a bit of a nice contrast to the color on the back, but it just helps it feel quite comfortable to hold. Even this bigger phone, it's not particularly slippery. It doesn't feel too fragile, actually. And also with these matte finishes, it doesn't pick up any fingerprints or smudges at all. So even with my sweaty fingers, it still looks just as good as when I took it out of the box. On the bottom, we've got the USB-C port, one downward firing speaker, and also a microphone. And then up top, we've got a whole load of different sensors in here, which I'll talk about in a second, along with an earpiece, which acts as a second speaker. So we do still have dual stereo speakers. The left side has the SIM card tray, which is still a single 4G SIM. There's no dual SIM or 5G option, unfortunately. Nothing on the top. And on the side, we've got the volume and the power button. I must admit, I do quite like the look of it. It's definitely a step up from last year, particularly on the XL. Gone is that horrible notch, which I must admit was really, really ugly last year. Now we just get quite a big forehead bezel. So while this sort of asymmetrical design won't be to everyone's taste, at least Google are actually putting this bezel to good use. So let's get the specs out of the way first, because Google aren't really putting that much emphasis on those. We've got the new Snapdragon 855, along with six gigs of RAM, that's up from four on the Pixel 3, and either 64 or 128 gigs of storage. So not an awful lot of storage, no micro SD or anything like that. But to mitigate that slightly, you do get three months free of Google's cloud storage backup, up to 100 gigabytes. After those three months, it is $2 a month, or you can get 15 gigs for free. But I do still think 64 gigs is a little bit stingy. In terms of the difference between the 4 and the 4XL, well, obviously the biggest one is the screen size, 5.7 versus 6.3. The bigger one also has a higher resolution. It's Quad HD Plus versus Full HD Plus. So uh, the XL is a little bit sharper. And also the battery is a fair bit bigger on the XL. And while it does obviously have a bigger screen, I think we will see a longer battery life with this. So battery size, screen size, and resolution. That's pretty much the only difference between the two phones, of course, other than the price. So if I put the regular four to one side for a second and concentrate on the XL, let me show you some of the new features. Now, the first thing I'm noticing, although you're not because you're watching this uh, on a 30 FPS video on YouTube, but we actually have a much smoother 90 Hertz refresh rate screen. Everything just feels a lot smoother, and it's kind of hard to go back to a normal 60 Hertz screen afterwards. So for me, the pixels have always been about two things, the camera, which we'll come to in a second, and the software, because of course this is running a stock version of Android 10. 
And so with that, we get a few new features, including the built-in dark theme, which I'm a big fan of, and actually will help save a little bit of battery. Now, while we are talking about the software, one of my favorite new features are the improved gestures, because previously on the Pixel 3 on Android 9, you had that horrible little pill thing and back button, which really didn't improve the nav bar at all. So now by default, it's a swipe in from either side to go back, swipe up from the bottom to go home, hold it to get recently used apps, and you can swipe up from the corner to get the Google Assistant. Or of course you can squeeze it and that'll do the same thing. The Tech Chap on YouTube. So this new and improved Google Assistant, which is fully baked into the phone, whereas previously it would have just taken you to the app, now I can actually search for keywords within it. Now before we get to the camera, let me run you through the new motion sensing technology because Google have actually built in a kind of radar in the Pixel 4. It's based on Google's project solely and it can do a bunch of things, but let me start by showing you how it helps with face unlocking. So if I turn it off, look what happens to the screen when I go to reach for it. It detects that I'm picking it up, it fires up the face unlocker camera and then straight away I'm in the phone. So you can actually unlock the phone instantly without pressing any buttons it just does it automatically. And so far it seems to be really reliable actually. And that's because of this new motion sensing camera, which works in all lighting and it has a 180 degree field of view. And that's part of this ambient display, which will also detect if you're walking away from the phone and so it'll then dim the screen again to help save battery. You also have things like quick gestures where you can swipe around to skip songs and pause them and stop alarms and phone calls and things, but arguably they're a little bit more gimmicky. And the good news is, if you're not much of a fan of all this, you can easily turn it off. So I've kept you guys waiting long enough. Let's have a look at the new Pixel 4 camera. So the first thing you'll probably notice is this new horizon line, which tells you if the phone is straight or not. So when I get it back there, zero degrees, we can get a nice and straight photo. Now the main 12 megapixel lens is pretty much the same as before, but we do now get a two times telephoto. But we can actually go more than two times because this uses Google's new super res zoom, even zooming in all the way up to eight times. You'll also notice how what you see in the viewfinder is pretty much exactly what you end up getting in the final photo. That's because Google have incorporated live HDR plus into the viewfinder so you see pretty much exactly what you get at the end. You don't have to wait for the process and for the colors to pop and all the HDR to come in. You now see that live so you can better compose the photo. I think the biggest camera upgrade though is the new dual exposure, something pro photographers will be familiar with. Using the new sliders in the camera app, you can expose the foreground separately to the background. So essentially we've got separate sliders for brightness and shadows, and it's all done live in the viewfinder. It's such an awesome new feature and I can't wait to test this out properly. The Pixel's famous night sight has also had a bit of an upgrade, with Google focusing on improving the colors and making it more true to life. Going a step further, there's a new astro photography mode. Oh, and the best bit is this new astro mode will also be coming to older Pixel 3 and also 3a phones. As for the selfie lens, there's a single camera up here. It's an eight megapixel F2 selfie camera, hi there. Um, but as you can see, there's just the one lens. The previous Pixel 3 actually had two lenses and you could switch between a wider field of view. But now this single lens is a little bit wider than before, so you can still get quite a lot in the scene. So that's the new Pixel 4 and 4XL. Price-wise, we're looking at £670 or $800 for the regular 4 and £829 or $900 for the XL, plus $100 more if you want double the storage. But what do you make of the new Pixels? Has Google done enough to tempt you to upgrade? Make sure you do hit that subscribe button as I've got battery tests, camera comparisons, and my full review coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.